There are a lot of things I didn't understand growing up. Just off the top of my head, dodecahedrons, large hadron collider. Who is, who is hadron anyway? I still don't know what encephalitis is, and I for sure didn't know what alchemy was. Now, you have to understand, I didn't grow up in a first world country where I could just watch an anime that would teach me things like what alchemy is, or what full metal jackets are. The only anime I had growing up was like Cat Dog, and I'm 80% sure cat dogs don't exist. But what does exist is Todd's blessing, which he doth bestow upon us this day, inspiring me to graciously lay at your feet this build. After you talk to Brynjolf and Mercer, come back and see me. A build that will allow us to be masters of subterfuge, destruction, illusion, and the like without ever dabbling in those schools of magic. A build that uses the Toxic Toss mod, which at the time of making this video only has 343 unique downloads and frankly deserves much more love. I set to work creating our Mad Alchemist with our current understanding of what those funny sounds mean using science, numbers, the Fibonacci sequence to create the ultimate professor. The alchemy forges the man who will in turn Kemi the Alk. I love him so much. Plop Bibble Pants PhD is the most contagiously optimistic doctor you have ever seen. We may be a doctor, we may have our PhD, but we have not yet mastered the alchemy. Not the biggest deal ever. There's a quick surefire way to progress almost instantly through the alchemy levels, but that requires we must first successfully escape Helgen. A simple task for a simple man. We make our way through the ruins. Instantly betray the Imperials who rescue us by killing the torturer. Because the hood is a highly fashionable item, we now look like Emperor Palpatine. Good. We escape with Hadvar and turn our back entirely on the dragon threat in Skyrim, instantly dooming everyone on the planet because we are the harbinger of their reality. But I never said I wanted to be the harbinger of their reality, I simply want to brew potions. And to become the best brewer of potions, we need to collect Salmon Roe from Salmon, specifically the salmon you find jumping upstream in freshwater rivers in Skyrim. I never said I was good at this, but the meaning of alchemy as I understand it is we can succeed with lack of apparent athletic talent. I collect many, many salmon roe from the rivers near Riverwood trailing all the way east across to Windhelm. I slink through the waters just north of Winterhold in search of Nordic barnacles. I kick the ever-loving shit out of that bandit chief at the wreck of the pride of Telvos. He hides behind a shield because he fears knowledge. But it's as they say, the, the, the pen is mightier than the bandit chief. I collect the Nordic barnacles from underneath the shipwrecks along the coast and the shoreline to the north. I peruse the various kitchens of Skyrim searching for our last ingredient, garlic. All of these ingredients are very easy to find, but garlic might be the easiest. I travel to Solitude where there are many, many kitchens that I can get garlic from. Rumor has it there is a garlic bandit on the loose. It tickles me to think that we're walking around absolutely reeking of fish eggs, warm barnacles, and garlic, and there's absolutely nothing anyone will do about it. Anyways, we have everything we need now, so we have to travel to an alchemy hub of your choice. Here we will be creating elixirs of water breathing and absolutely hammer those alchemy levels with our immense nose-wielding knowledge-filled head. We've leveled up so fast that we're just standing here waiting for our skill notes notifications to catch up to us. We take the necessary perks to increase the strength of our brews, in particular the base 5 alchemy skills to double the strength of our potions and poisons, green thumb to double up on every ingredient we harvest, and poisoner to make our poisons 25% more effective. Next we are going to need death bells from Morthal and nightshade from around about the same area and just about any grave in Skyrim, swamp fungal pods and canis roots from various other areas here as well. I don't know, just, just use the wiki, I, I gather these from almost all over the place. I burst into this random lady's house and she's forced to look on as this proper Breton geezer can death bells and nightshade to make the most powerful deadly poisons available in the entire game within the confines of her humble domicile. To make matters worse, she sells us some of these ingredients, namely giant lichen and skeever tails, which when combined make even sillier potions. And now she is going to be complicit in my crimes. We are going to combine copious amounts of canis root and swamp fungal pods to create paralysis poisons in extreme quantities, forcibly sell all of our water breathing elixirs to the same vendor by clearing out her gold, saving, smacking her in the face, reloading which refills the coffers and rinse and repeat. Now we are filthy stinking rich. So humor me for a moment. If we were to take this money and equate the Skyrim Gold Septum to perhaps maybe one Spanish doubloon, and if one Spanish doubloon is worth around $100,000 to $100,000 in today's economy, that would mean we have up to $12 trillion. Such is the power of alchemy. Science. Numbers. And now it's up to me to show you how this build will work in the most controlled scientific way imaginable. The Thieves Guild questline. Now hear me out. The Thieves Guild simply allows us the best opportunity to engage in stealthy shenanigans in a fairly enclosed and formulaic environment. Look how I'm controlling Brynjolf's lack of advancement towards me right now. The scientific methodology is beyond his comprehension. He thinks he's selected us for a job, but really it is we who have selected him to play with his silly little guild and his silly little life. A trifle matter. I push Medesi's ring deep inside Branche's ass without him noticing, where the guards will later surprise but search him and accuse him of stealing it. Well, looks like I chose the right person for the job. 
Looks like I chose the right person for the job. Vegetable. Looks like he chose the right person for the job. Brynjolf challenges us to make our way through to their secret lair or whatever, which is in the sewers. Humble beginnings to flex our enormous power. <laughs> Phenomenal. Skeva, I uppercut during paralysis. Man you can hear screaming after the trap sound effect. Man whose health bar continuously mysteriously refills after every couple poison vials. Sometimes some assistance is required. Alchemy. Science. Brynjolf's first task is to extort three store owners for their protection money or something. But because this build has nothing to do with fist fighting, except for in the cases that it's required for science, like, like when that one man's health bar would continuously refill every couple poison vials, we will, in fact, be killing everyone against his wish. First up is Bercy Honeyhand. What? Now I have a lot to do, so I'm afraid you'll just have to leave. Mission accomplished. Everyone is dead, and Bercy remains, frozen in place, forever watchful of his storefront. The monolith stands, guarding over the coffers within. Alchemy, as I understand it, is also poetic moments like this. Pillars of our expression. Between doing Bercy and doing the next one, I went around and spent 40 minutes pickpocketing in order to max out our pickpocketing skill, and purchased the skills not only to learn how to reverse pickpocket poisons, but also to gain the ability to strip people completely bare once they've been paralyzed. Jarl Layla's steward, Anuriel. I stand on Yarl Layla's lap and take all of her belongings. Maxing out pickpocketing isn't very difficult to do. You simply have to take the item that weighs the least and is worth the most from NPCs at every opportunity. Mind yourself in my city, friend. I reverse pickpocket this paralysis potion to Shadow's inventory. Then I see him recovering and I instantly paralyze him again. Anyways, this isn't super important, but it is a vital contribution to the overall feeling of absolutely dosing our enemies with, with homebrew meds against their will. And it is relevant because I sort of do this to Helga. Look at her, all smug like this with a weird secret brothel. I push this paralysis suppository into her ass. I walk into her personal quarters and throw the mystery goop on her from just out of the line of sight of everyone. Which, as you all know, means I did not commit the crime. Who could have done this? Very methodology. Also, did you know she is a hawker enthusiast and keeps one of the tusks beneath her bed? That's amazing. I lay her to rest with her prized possessions. Kirava is next, so naturally I step outside to find Shadow still recovering from the previous poison and do him one again. Now, in this quest for the Thieves Guild, once you complete the previous two steps of your choosing in the manner that we have, the third normally catches wind and begs for mercy. Unfortunately for her, I just spent 40 minutes leveling up pickpocketing to reverse pickpocket items, so I smear some science liquids in her pockets until she expires. <sighs> Her husband then immediately tells me to be careful as he is calmly walking over to Kirava's corpse to assume control of the inn. Oh no. Now, we weren't supposed to kill anyone, so Brynjolf asks us if we're daft. But I'm not here to impress him, I'm here to put on a show of absolute pure domination using the most perfect Skyrim build ever. One that can throw things. Also, we know we can't possibly be daft because Plop Bingledorp has a PhD in his name. Despite our massive failure, Brynjolf is satisfied and allows us into the Thieves Guild anyway. I am tasked with sabotaging some beehives at Golden Glow Estate. So naturally I paralyze the entire Thieves Guild to affirm Brynjolf's decision before I set out to get to work. The exterior of Golden Glow Estate? No problem. I'm tasked with burning only some of the beehives, and obviously I hadn't listened to this instruction. I poison bomb some of the honey farm's hide muscle. Easy peasy. It's the interior of the mansion where this build starts to shine. Observe. So here I am, playing Thieves Guild Quest without any lockpicks. It's almost as if I am not committed to the cause or something. So I backtrack to see if I can find one and realize, hey, everything is massively easy. And I know you're thinking it's because this build is god tier dummy thick. But the truth of it is, the game simply hadn't adjusted to it being set to the legendary difficulty the first time. 
This is pretty weird. I try everything to correct this and I'm unsuccessful. So as a workaround for this, I set my health to one with console commands to better commit to a more legendary playthrough. This will be an important note for later, so keep this in mind. Now, being a veteran of Skyrim completely breaking down before my very eyes, I know I need to work extra carefully in order to not be seen and instantly killed by every guard in here. I search some miscellaneous pantries. I find four lockpicks next to the set of shelves with cabbages on it. Unfortunately, I'm immediately sent into a reboot as I am not quick enough on the trigger finger. I make my way back upstairs. Old mate has found his clothing that we stole from him while he was standing there leaning on the wall totally conscious. I paralyze him, but it says I've already been caught pickpocketing him, so he sends me into a reverse fetal position doing the oh face. No matter. I sneak very sneaky-like, but Todd programs Skyrim to have full volumetric air physics, and the naked sleuth detects the latent wind currents of my footsteps from several feet away. In my panicked escape, I walk into this guy's axe, instantly dragging and dropping myself into the recycle bin. Okay, I think to myself, maybe the game was trying to tell me something when it was defaulting to the novice, over and over again. Maybe I am the novice. Then I remembered. Hang on a minute. I'm pretty sure I have a couple of invisibility potions from when I was selling those water breathing potions to that alchemist that one time. And bam, Todd's wrath averted. I can continue to mitigate the complete breakdown of this game and play for a little bit longer. What even is reality when you can simply make your own? I'm supposed to steal some stuff from Arangoth. He thinks I cannot see him or something. I back out steadily after clearing his entire inventory. I back out past the sleuth, this time breathing in the wind current so they don't like waft around near him or something. I unlock the cellar. I sneak inside. This guard has absolutely no idea the severity of the danger he is in. As Plop Blob PhD breathes down his neck, but but in reverse to avoid like w the wind currents. Please comment. Breathe in, best guest, not out. Only in. Press your lips to your nose and recirculate the air. Fibonacci. Okay, so I'm spotted. What of it? I clear out the safe. Old mate wakes up, so I put him down again. Mission success, and I am free. Before I return, I head back to the Morthal Swamp area to procure some more materials for some more potions. I return to Whiterun to purchase some materials and create some more potions from those materials. But you know, things things have been playing up for a while now, and, and I know something is amiss. Though I can't quite put my finger on it. I return to Brynjolf. He says our contractor is furious. You know, he is also furious because of the look on his face. He says we're going to have to make it up to Maven Blackbriar before we can continue. No problem. I paralyze him and he sits headfirst submerged in water for 15 seconds. Amazing. And that's when I notice something crazy happening. The entire town is absolutely going ham on this thief. And I'm not talking a little ham. They've shoved him behind that leather working station. They're blasting him with bolts of lightning. Battle axes to the face. The works. But his health bar isn't moving. You know, this wouldn't be the first time that Skyrim's bugged out on me, so I'm not that fussed. However, the issue arises that this time Maven Blackbriar is out here fighting the thief and will not talk to me to progress the quest. This is awful. I try restarting the game. I try waiting out some time in Riften. But neither of these common solutions appear to work. Hmm. I figure maybe things will reset if I leave the zone entirely. Such as by going to Windhelm, heading over to the Palace of the Kings to see Ulfric Stormcloak. Find him on his throne and in his ceiling. Pickpocket everything he has, then fast travel back to Riften. Because because enough enough time's passed by now. It didn't fix the eternal battle between the immortal thief and Riften, but at least it seems like Maven Blackbriar is not involved this time. I paralyze her instantly, and then immediately follow up with an apology. I am a man of deep remorse. She follows up with a job to poison some mead and meet with a contact somewhere, blah blah, I poison her again. I meet with a contact in Whiterun who instructs me on what to do. Another excellent opportunity to show you what a master alchemist throwing little jars of like, plant smoothies can do. I paralyze Malice Machius. He he'll be alright. The job is I have to infiltrate Hunning Bunning Meadery, and under the guise of pest control, apply skeever poison to a cask of wine which is to be served to a government official, who will become very sick and arrest Sabion. So I approach the cellar to do the job, equipped with some deadly poison, and... They're, they're immune to poison? Well, it's good to see they're not immune to paralysis. <laughs> Unfortunately, it appears it wasn't just the Thief in Riften who has infinite damage reduction, but actually everything that has a health bar in Skyrim, as confirmed with this test arrow that hits the Skeever and does no damage at all. It's at this time that it dawns on me that there is something deeply, deeply wrong with the game, and I will not be able to showcase this build beyond non-damaging abilities. Now, remember how I would repeatedly change the difficulty of the Legendary earlier? Well, as it turns out, doing that over and over again would reapply part of the damage resistance buff to all NPCs in the game, but only after some time had passed. And its switching back to Novice was simply a visual bug in Sky UI, not representative of the underlying difficulty. I had since reinstalled every mod, and this bug was uh, still occurring, so it was safe to say that the entire save is completely tortellinied. 
absolutely totally pasta maxed. It had occurred to me while frantically dashing through this metery cellar, being relentlessly pursued by like two dozen skeevers, that Todd Howard could be personally tampering with my game to prevent this build from seeing the light of day because it has mods. <laughs> I need you all to know that I struggled to get through this segment of the quest many multiple times, and parts of me were rapidly dying. Parts of me I have absolutely no faith I'll get back. I finally paralyzed the homeless mage down here, panic, and forget to destroy the skeever nest before progressing into the next area. In a wild twist of events, it turns out the homeless mage is in here too, and I paralyze him despite him having the opportunity to hit me with lightning at point blank and still missing. I take, literally, the clothes from his back, rendering him poorer than ever before. I poison the mead. I backtrack and destroy the nest. I escape through the tunnel. I return to the meadery chamber where the exit is and deny the homeless mage respite from this waking nightmare. Very stinky. The guard drinks the Kool-Aid and Sabjorn is arrested, and it's mission accomplished. First try, no deaths. Malice assumes control of the meadery, which will make Maven Blackbriar very happy. I steal some final items for the quest and I'm on my way home. But this whole experience has hurt me so deeply that while I watch the eternal struggle between this thief and the entirety of Riften, yet again, in yet another completely balked Skyrim save, I vow to finish this. If Todd would not allow me to do this without some sort of mod-related corruption, then I would do this without mods. With mechanics, only Skyrim itself will allow me. Thusly, in defiance of Todd's will, I continued this deep-fried save and purchased some armor with the alchemy enchantment on it. I purchased some grand soul gems from Farangar. I disenchanted the gloves with the alchemy enchantment and apply it to my fishing hat, my necklace, my ring, and my braces. I equip the enchanted gear. Fibonacci. I fast travel to the rift and docks and acquire some spade tails, salt piles, and long fins. A quick stop and I briefly rest at the tavern in Whiterun. I'm becoming more excited by the moment to show you the true power of this build. And to do that, I'm going to combine the salt piles and long fins or spade tails to make a potion of fortify restoration. Drink it. Unequip and re-equip my clothing enchanted with Fortify Alchemy. Make another potion of Fortify Restoration. Drink it. Unequip and re-equip my clothing enchanted with Fortify Alchemy. Make another potion of Fortify Restoration. Drink it. Unequip and re-equip my clothing enchanted with Fortify Alchemy. Make another potion of Fortify Restoration. Drink it. Unequip As you can see, this is the Fortify Restoration loop. Because I thought to myself, best guest, what is the worst thing that can possibly happen to an individual? Uh, grab the phone and put up a Facebook status? No. What is this? Pre-Renaissance England? It's completely subjective, of course, but my opinion is that removing all agency, all power from someone, and then putting them in a position where no one can find or help them is probably the scariest thing ever. So what I'm going to do is make this nightmare reality on the NPCs in Skyrim. And to do this, I'm going to eat this elixir of the healer, bottle and all, to give me 1 billion percent boost to restoration spells. Re-equip my enchanted armor so that I have 4 times over stacked, a negative 238 million percent boost to the potency of created potions. I go to create a potion with my newfound power, and my PC instantly annihilates Skyrim. Todd. Todd's here, he's trying his best. But you know, we are scientists here. Plorb Nobler has his PhD, and alchemy, as I understand it, is taking the numbers and pretending to know what to do with them. So we do it all again, but this time without the negative hundreds of millions of percents, and Plorb and Plorb and PhD has now created a paralysis potion that will last for 353,950 seconds, and an invisibility potion that will last 1.4 million seconds. That's right. If my game wasn't going to allow me to do damage to people anymore and is permanently balked, then I am going to do the most nightmarish thing imaginable. I am going to paralyze people for 81 in-game days, drag their unmoving bodies away with telekinesis, and then chuck invisibility potions over them, which will last for 327 days in Skyrim, so that no one will ever be able to find them. Trust me, I did the math on this. I, I, I know how long these things last. And I'm going to do this to the Thieves Guild because, for one, they were quite rude to me, to be honest. I, I, I didn't really appreciate how they spoke to me. But two, no one will ever find them in their secret lair. Someone needs pushing around. I'm the one. Of course you can buy me a drink. Maven wishes you to be in a <laughs> Very good. I'll tell you.
Well, bring you. Let me guess. He just plucked you off the street. So you're the new recruit, you huh? Well, looks like you and I are gonna have to get very well acquainted. You follow my lead and do exactly as I say. Suppose I can work with your face. Even if people do come down here, they'll never find them. In 87 days, these people will either wake up or they'll have, like, died or something. Also, I did the math. They really are going to be paralyzed for three months. I mean, this is the most powerful build indeed. Apply this to bandits and caves. Do this to, like, Ulfric. You can do this- you can do this to anyone. Any NPC you don't like, you can just make them go away. Like, Soprano style. They don't stand a chance. No one stands a chance. This shit is unbelievable. A huge thank you to the patrons. You are the salt pile that I apply to, like, a fish to create a fortify restoration potion, applying not only flavor, but also power. So thank you for your support. For the rest of you, please share the video with a friend and let them know that PhD's nuts. I love you. Oh.